Good afternoon. We are going to wait a couple seconds here, maybe a minute or two before we get going. So uh, please bear with us. In the meantime, I'm going to use my handy dandy, uh, well overpriced now hand sanitizer to clean off some of the goods. That one for gold nowadays. Hope you're having a lovely Tuesday. I know we had uh, some bad weather over the weekend in South Carolina. Had a actual couple manufacturing sites get roofs taken off of and some uh, buildings destroyed. So hope you're staying safe and none of you were circumstances to tornadoes this weekend. All right, we're gonna get started. So thank you again for joining another live virtual demo session with Rhino Toolhouse. If you're joining us for the first time, Rhino Toolhouse is a major distributor and manufacturer for uh, assembly solutions in the manufacturing environment today. We cover over 30 states, have over well over 100 different employees with us, and we're pr proud to represent well over 200 different manufacturing sites, manufacturing vendors, excuse me, and we manufacture several of our own products in-house. We have taken back over the last three weeks several virtual live demos for you, we are day three of day four here located in Concord, North Carolina, the Rhino Assembly Distribution Headquarters. We're excited today to talk about exoskeletons. This is the second exoskeleton that we've talked about here on the live virtual demos, but the first passive exoskeleton that we will talk about. We've got two more that we'll present to you in the next several weeks. So please continue to stay tuned for us and visit our, our past demos live on our YouTube page. Just a sidebar admin note before we get started, there is a chat section inside of the Zoom meeting. If you have any questions, please go ahead and type those out now or during the actual demo. At the very end, we'll have a quick Q&A to answer those as best as we possibly can. If we can't answer those, then we'll get back to you in, in, a, in a short amount of time. So, what is exoskeletons. What are exoskeletons? Who is exobionics? Today here we're talking about the exovest from exobionics. Right now, the exovest is an upper body exoskeleton that assists operators from chest level work to overhead work. It is a very lightweight and durable exoskeleton that provides full freedom range of motion. When we talk about exoskeletons, there's a couple that we have. We talk about the active exoskeleton versus the passive exoskeleton. The active exoskeleton, much like the BioServer Iron Hand that we presented last week, is an, as an actual powered system. The exoskeleton from ExoVest and the ones that we'll present in the future are all passive exoskeletons, meaning they actually actu actuate strictly mechanical and powered by the operator's hands movements, arm movements, body movements themselves. The ExoVest from ExoBionics is strictly a mechanical device. ExoBionics themselves is a company that was founded in the early, the mid 2000s and started developing products in around 2010 based in California. Their strong focus initially was in the medical rehabilitation field, taking injured shoulders or people that needed to rehabilitate and really walk again and helping them with that process with a lower body exoskeleton. They dived into the defense contracting world, creating apparatuses and exoskeletons to help our soldiers in the forefront of fighting terrorism do their job better, more efficiently. Since then, they've gotten into the industrial world with the exovest. Here today is version one, but in true and reality, it's at version four through the development and the research and the input with companies like Boeing and Ford to make the ExoVest how, as it is here today. A little bit about the ExoVest, and I'm gonna have Mr. Brad come over here, and he's gonna actually show you the ExoVest itself. Go ahead and turn towards the camera for me, Brad. So the ExoVest itself weighs 9.5 pounds. It has a torso tube on the back that allows you to fit a five 
foot individual all the way up to a 6.5, 6.4 foot individual via adjustabilities on the torso tube. I'm gonna adjust this to my body because I'm gonna put it on later for you. Some of the components of the exo vest include an upper arm straps, upper arm cuffs. We have a gas spring that has multiple different levels of packages and we'll get into that later. We have a, an actuation zone, so we have a low, a standard, and a high level activation zone. Then we get into the multiple links that, are, that are, allow the system to move freely with the body. We have a carbon fiber backing and a mesh that um, allows the operator to be cooled off so that carbon fiber is not against the back. We have a waist belt, and then we have a mirrored on the opposite side. Thank you, Mr. Brad, I do appreciate your efforts. You I'm gonna most put- welcome. I'm gonna put this on, and why I put this on, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the gas spring. So it's, again, this is strictly mechanical. Uh, it is powered by gas springs that are actuated by a cam and roller system. So once I, uh, the cam presses down, I actually provide that feedback, uh, or I provide that pressure on those gas springs, which provides the assistance for me. The gas springs right now, as it stands, come in four different levels. We have level one. Level one provides five to seven pounds of additional assistance. Level two provides seven to nine pounds of additional assistance. Level three provides nine to 12 pounds and level four provides 12 to 15 pounds of additional assistance. Those are on both sides. I have one on my right side. I have one on my left side. And we'll talk a little bit about how we actuate these and where the actual activation zone re relates when it comes to the different settings on the exo vest. So when I don the system itself, I put it on just like a backpack and make sure I put my shoulders in, the shoulder straps. I tighten my waist belt first. I want it snug. I don't want it too tight. I want to have a majority of my weight for this vest only being 9.5 pounds. I do want it on my actual hip bones. I then tighten the chest strap itself. For the females that are out there, we will go below or we'll go above the chest. Then I will make sure that my shoulder straps aren't too, tug, too snug, but they are just form fitting to my body. I still wanna have a little bit of movement and be able to get my hands in there. Then I'll put on the forearm straps on both sides. And then I have a lower upper arm cuff that I snap with a patented snap from Exobionics. It's a very, um, a very user-friendly snap that allows you to take it off very quickly. Uh, but I put the, the bottom one on first. Do that again for you to see. Snug it up, and then I put the upper arm strap on. And I do the opposite side as well. So when it's shipped from the factory, the upper arm cuff, which is the whole material that you see here, it's actually pretty flat. Um, it comes flat. So what we recommend is when you actually uh, decide to purchase one of these, we recommend that you store it in the cuffed position, the, cl the closed position. It allows the cuff to form to the bicep, so it's very easily to put on. As you can see, it takes about one minute for an operator to put on when they become very proficient with it. Uh, initially, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do, but uh, over time and over training, you'll be able to put this on within one minute. So uh, I'm gonna turn around. I can show you full freedom range of motion. Uh, the key thing with exoskeletons, whether it's this one with the exobionics or it's the other three that we represent, it's all about the fit. You have to define the proper application. You have to define the proper fit. So let's talk a little bit about some applications. So applications that the exovest can be used on could be automobile, automotive applications. Underbody, you're in that, the very final part of the assembly line. You're underbody, you're checking, you're installing some things underbody, those checks itself. Uh, um, aerospace applications, think about all the aerospace applications that are out there when you're grinding, you're sanding, you're polishing, you have a drill, you have a hut gun, a rivet gun, all of those applications. We've gotten a lot into packaging lately. 
So helping operators pick up boxes, put them on pallets that may not be in an a ergonomic zone that's very low. We have to adjust it and bring it up higher. We do a lot with maintenance as well. There's a lot of companies that says, hey, I, when I replace a gear on this huge machine that I have, that's weighing 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, and I have to lift up overhead to install it. It's so typically a, a multiple person operation. This has helped them in that procedure. And then we have uh, companies like a yarn company that we have here in South Carolina that picks up spools and wants to place spools into a yarn machine to be able to actual spin yarn. So there's a couple applications and we talked a little bit about the proper fit of this system. What I wanna to go to is, is what we call the activation zones. So the blue knob that I talked about in the very back, there's three level, three activation zones. There's a low, there's a medium, and, or excuse me, a low, a standard, and a high. An activation zone is when I actually activate the gas springs, uh, I'm taking my tricep away from my body to actuate the gas springs and at about a 15 to 20 degree range of motion away from my body, I can start feeling the gas springs initiate and providing force upwards to my arms. At about the 90 degree zone here, I am fully activated and everything over in the chest range and above is fully assisted depending on the levels of gas springs that you have in the vest. I'm gonna actuate it now to show you how easy it is. There's two ways to actuate it. Number one, we always have to actuate it when our hand is down, our shoulder and our hand is down by our side. I, if, I, if I'm flexible, I can reach across and actually pull up on the actuation trigger, which I do now, so it's now fully actuated. Or if I'm not flexible enough, I can reach my hand across my chest, come over, grab the trigger, put my hand back down, and then turn it on. So now I am fully activated. I can have free range of motion as it stands right here. Okay, so I, I, this is not an Iron Man suit. It doesn't mean that I can pick up 15, 20, 30 pounds more. This means that if you have a 30 pound uh, part that you're picking up, that it's gonna hopefully feel like 15 pounds. And again, there's a range on the levels of gas springs for a reason. So we have that range for you, but that will feel like a 15 pound less part. We don't want you to go out there and start doing a bunch of pushups start acting like your Iron Man and be able to pick up your enemy, swirl them around your head and throw them out the door. That's not what we want you to do. Um, this is strictly meant for, again, that chest level and above when it comes to overhead assist, allowing that full range of motion still. So I'm gonna turn this off. Again, my hands are gonna be down my side. I'm gonna deactivate it. Hands down my side and deactivate it. So when it comes to your interest, say, hey, uh, listen, I really, I wanna see this up and close and personable. I wanna request a demo. There's a couple of different configurations that we recommend. There's two different ways to order, two different ways to deploy inside of your customer location now. We have what we call the general configuration set. The general configuration vest comes with everything that is possible. So when it comes to our waist belt, we have a small medium and we have a large extra large waist belt. On the upper arm cuffs and upper arm straps, we have a small, medium, and large. On the torso tube, it becomes standard as one. So it's adjusted from that five feet to that six, six, four, six, five individual that it can fit just with this one set of, or this one vest. And then the gas springs, they have the level one, two, three, and four. With the general configuration set, you get all of that, including a nice carry bag and including a washable mesh bag, and we'll get into that in a little bit. There's additional options that do come with a general configuration set that I don't have on today. Number one, we do have a neck pad or a neck rest that would situate right behind here and allows me, if I'm fully overhead most of the day, allows me to have lower, uh, less neck injuries. And I also have that expander belt for people that like a lot of fried chicken. We have the expander belt down below. And additionally, there is um, some nylon or some nice um, polyurethane maybe, uh, not Nike Under Armour forearm sleeves in case you would like to, your operator to wear these as well. So the general configuration set comes with everything. Then we have a single configuration set. The single configuration set is basically, hey, I've looked at the whole general config set or I've had a demo, you know, we sized up some operators. I just wanna order spring, gas spring level three, I want to get a large and I want to get mediums, medium uppers, and that's all I want. 
that's the single configuration. You get it, you break it down, you get specifically what you want with that. So again, just to recap, two different kinds of configurations that you can order the ExoVist with, a general configuration and a single configuration. So deployment. Deployment inside of the actual customer uh, plant. If you don't have a good team under, you know, in your plant, ergonomic team, an EHS team, a safety team that wants to truly own and deploy this, let me give you some, a couple recommendations. So we have a, several customers that uh, are utilizing this from Boeing to Ford to, like I said, a yarn company to a Toyota to Daimlers of the world. And what we saw the best fit for this is literally developing a fit card. So an operator gets sized, they get their measurements to be able to wear the appropriate uh, fittings for the exo vest and they get an actual fit card. And that fit card stays with them. Their safety manager knows about it. Their line lead knows about it. And when they go, go in, they make sure that that exo vest is sized to them or they grab the material to make sure that they can change it out real quick and size it to their nature. There is always a question that comes up too as well, is this shareable or do I have to dedicate this to an actual individual operator? The question is, it's really up to your safety department, but we have seen it a lot being a shareable device, shared between the first shift to the second shift. And where we saw that very successful is that when the first shift and the second ship, ship, shift excuse me, operator are aligned in body types. So my large, extra large waist belt will fit him, my medium uppers will fit him or her. Where we see the difference is, is that typically the neck pillow is going to be dedicated to an operator. Um, obviously, if you sweat in this kind of humidity down here in South Carolina, Georgia, and the Southeast, uh, this is where you're gonna sweat the most. So we, we say dedicate your neck pillow per individual operators. So, when it comes to maintenance of these systems, these are right now fully washable on all the soft goods. And soft goods, I mean the upper arm straps. We're gonna get into any kind of the material here. We'll get the waist belt, we'll get the shoulder straps. If you buy the general configuration, you get a mesh bag. If you don't buy the general configuration, I'd recommend go buy a mesh bag out there. Wash everything in that, that mesh bag. We get about 200 washes on these systems. Uh, and that's really all you need to be odor controlled. Um, all other, other customers have just taken some Lysol wipes or some antibacterial wipes and wiped off the system itself when it comes to maintenance. We have um, dozens if not hundreds of these already in the field and we haven't had an actual breakage that hasn't been able to be fixed or warrantied. They do come with a standard one year warranty on the manufacturing work or craftsmanship work of the ExoVest but we haven't had anything majorly break. Uh, you do see a trigger, a trigger uh, a tether broke off here. This is a demo system, easily replaceable if, uh, we, chise, if we decide to do that. So. so a little bit of the end state that I have here for you today is, remember the ExoVest, along with some of the other ones we have, but the ExoVest in particular is an up, upper body exoskeleton that's meant for chest level and above work that provides full range of motion very lightweight at 9.5 pounds. So right now, I, hopefully you guys have entered any kind of your questions into the uh, question box. We're gonna go ahead and open it up now for a little bit of Q&A. And uh, Mr. Steve, I believe he's on the phone. Hopefully he can give us some of the questions. Thanks, Justin. Uh, first question here, do you have any cleaning equipment that you would recommend for this unit? Oh, great question, Steve. Uh, hopefully everybody can hear Steve, uh, but the question goes back to cleaning equipment for this. So besides the actual washable components, we do provide a UV cleaning cabinet. Uh, and what that is, is, uh, is a cabinet that can be closed. You can put the exo vest or other exoskeletons inside of it, and it cleans the whole entire system via ultraviolet. Uh, another question here from Mike. Uh, what price range do they sell in? What's the price range? So our typical price range is, is about $4,000 to $7,000 and it depends on what you buy and what you would like to add on. I would recommend you get with your local sales engineers uh, and they can tell you more about the pricing strategy, Mike.
A uh, question from Bryce. Uh, what happens if you activate without your arm straight down? So if we actuate this without my arm straight down, I can't actually activate it. So I have to be, and, and why that is is because the cam is pressing against the gas spring and it's not fully separated from that gas spring until I'm fully down by my side. So I can push on this all day long until I get down by my side and then it actuates. So as long as I am providing that pressure, which is again, about 10, 15 degrees away from my body, I won't be able to actuate it. Uh, question from Todd, uh, where have these been sold currently? Uh, currently, uh, I'd say you'd have to get uh, with some of your engineers, local engineers, to see what they've sold locally. But uh, some of their biggest customers would be Boeing uh, Corporation throughout all of North America. Uh, they've sold several into um, some automobile manufacturers such as Ford. Uh, we have a couple, uh, I believe, inside of Toyota. We have some mop and pop shop shops. Um, we have companies. Uh, that manufacture duct tape throughout the U.S. that have bought in several for us. So there is um, there's several dozen customers since they really have attacked this market with the ExoVest, um, and there's plenty more to come. Uh, question from Mike: uh, Could this be used for garage operator installers since uh, it is? overhead use and holding parts in place until tightened. Garage door, op maybe garage door installations. Um, yeah. We have, I mean, again, your overhead, I would assume at that point, most of that is overhead work. Um, so any of that would be a very good application. It goes back to uh, the investment and the return on investment that that company would want to do. I have a, a, a good success story that we did down in Charleston, South Carolina with a company that does spray foam installations. So they go into attics and they actually spray foam insulate the attics. Um, specifically, one of their big applications was a USS Yorktown located in uh, down at the harbor in Charleston. And they do all of this overhead all day long. And the benefit that we've talked about, right, is you have the ability to be able to have a, uh, a happier worker, a worker that is, um, has more energy, can be more efficient for you as your customer. The normal operations for overhead sprayer uh, did not allow the worker to come back to that specific job the next day. Um, so they invested in the ExoVest, they bought two of these, and they now have workers that can come and do spray operations five days a week for them be happy, still have energy to go home and play with their kids. Uh, another question from Darren. Uh, not sure if you mentioned this already, but uh, what is the overall weight of the unit? And hope you enjoyed the, uh, the next in our video, Darren. <laughs> uh, Darren, the overall weight is 9.5 pounds for the full system. Another question about the weight from Mohammed. Uh, does the weight of the vest have any impact on limiting operator movement? Um, were there any uh, feedback or studies about that? Uh, no, not that I know of that. This is one of the reasons why um, with Boeing, they do a, an intensive two-year evaluation on all the exoskeletons that are out there. And then when they do make their, their decision, they, they tend to go with one. One of the reasons why they chose the ExoVest over, over other ones that are out there was um, the freedom of motion that they do get with the ExoVest and the lightweightness of it. So being 9.5 is, is, has a competitive advantage over others. Uh, with the system activated, uh, sorry, this is a question from uh, from Dan. With the system activated, does the operator feel a constant lifting of the arms? So you actually, when you activate it, um, it, again, as I mentioned, at about that 15 to 20 degree range away from the body is when you start actually feeling this. About the 90 degree range away from the body is fully actuated. That whole time that they're up, there is pressure that's building up underneath your tricep and, and pushing your arm up. 
the way to limit some of the lower um, the lower height to work is by changing out the activation zone. So if I would go from a low to a standard all the way up to a high, then my activation zone would be up to around the 30 to 35 percentile range, or excuse me, degree range where I actuate it. So then I gain a little, about 20 degrees more on the bottom side if I don't want to have that actuated so I can do subassembly work or bench work before I actually go overhead. Perfect. Uh, question from Sergio. What's the estimated life cycle for the spring cylinders and the cost for each one if you have to buy it as a spare? Uh, good question, Sergio. Uh, on the price, I don't know specifically about each individual gas um, spring, but I will answer the longevity question. Right now, we don't have one that's failed. Um, if you can imagine a spring over time, you'll just feel less and less pressure. But we have a, uh, a major OEM, one of the original testers that put a pedometer on side of the spring. So they put it on the box. And what it did is measured every single upward stroke of the hand, they measured it or the arm measured it as one count. They went to 7 million before they found an actual depletion in the spring. Um, and that is a lot. I mean, that is, uh, for most people, 7 million is well over a year. Okay, all right, if there's no further questions, we're gonna wrap this up. I'm gonna give you a couple closing comments. So we're back here tomorrow, Concord, North Carolina. We're talking about Train AR, helping your operators become more proficient at your assembly processes and testing them. Stay interested, uh, stay tuned for that tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in Concord. Always check out our YouTube videos, Rhino Toolhouse uh, YouTube site. We'll have all of these posted on there so you can share and like with your fellow coworkers. If you have any questions, please reach out to your sales engineers about the Exo, Exo Vest by Exo Bionics and we're more than willing to get you a demo soon. Thank you so much. Stay tuned, have a wonderful day. Bye.